Good Tuesday morning, boys and girls. Did you have a good day? I'm so glad. Let's look in on our four new Cornerstone Construction Company workers. Oh dear, did you see what I saw yesterday? Josh came back and took a hammer. How could he do that? And after all Foreman Frank had to say was very clear that they should not touch anything on that shelf or pegboard without his permission. You know, God knows what Josh did, and God the Holy Spirit will be working on his conscience. Josh will have an opportunity to confess. He has a chance to learn. I bet he is teachable. He just needs to add a bit of self-control. Well, let's see what happens. Well, that's not too smart either. So, 
So you know the best thing to do for that? That's called temptation. But the best thing to do would be self-control, guys. Hmm. You know, I heard Mrs. Stone talking to the kids about that with Tanner today. She was saying that there was this man, and he wanted to build this house on land that looked so desirable. It was beautiful and had a lovely view, and he really wanted to build his house there. The problem was that it was sandy ground, and when the rain came, the sand shifted, and the house slid. It was a disaster. Yeah, it was a disaster. And Mrs. Stone said that the man should have dug down deep to see if there was a rocky foundation to withstand the storms. And she said a smart builder would never build his house upon the sand. And you know why? Because that means the cornerstone, the very first stone to be laid, would be on sand as well. And all the others would be too. And that's just not the same. Yeah, and what would happen to us if Christ, who is the cornerstone of his church, started building on a sandy foundation? Well, we would all be on the sand. And one day, we would slide up and fall apart. That's right. Yeah! Isn't it awesome to know that we can put our trust in God, the solid rock? We don't have to worry about the sliding off into that sandy ground because Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, is built on a firm foundation and we can be with him forever. Yeah, I get it. That's why we're supposed to be self control and wise. So we can be next to Christ on a solid rock. Yep. Yeah, I, I see that you had a reason for keeping us from taking anything before we knew how to use it. You didn't just say that to be mean. It makes way. Right, and now we know what the reason is. If Joshua used self-control, he wouldn't have took the hammer and hurt his thumb. Yeah, safety first, right, Frank? Yep. Well, you know, that could have, been, could have prevented this. We have all learned a very important lesson today. I sure hope your thumb will heal up, because it's really big. How's it feeling? Better. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry I took the hammer, Frank. Maybe if I had used self-control and waited, I wouldn't have increased the size of my thumb by three times. Not to mention the pretty black nail color. Right. And that self-control lesson is really a good lesson in all areas of life. Take weightlifting, for example. Believe it or not, I don't like to lift weights. But look at some of the results you can get. Yeah, you know, I try never to rush into anything without giving it lots of thought first. I like to think I need lots of self-control. Hmm. Hey Frank, is laziness the same as self-control? Oh, definitely not. Self-control, well, self-control is like, like putting your brake on, on your tractor. Hmm, brakes. So, you mean that sometimes we have to stop and think for a while? Yep. And then after we stop and think, we can either choose to go forward slowly or go forward quickly. Uh, but if you're driving a tractor and you don't know how to use the brakes or you forget to use the brakes, then disaster can happen. Yeah, I see. Self-control is just like using the brakes. Then, after giving it some wise thought, deciding whether to go forward or stop. Yep, that's why I'm listening to the Holy Spirit steers us and guides us. He tells us when to go, when to speed up, and when to slow down. So really it's self-control or, or discipline that should be steering us and, and guiding us as we go through life. Yep, that's why knowing God's word is so important. Wow! You know, that reminds me of one of my favorite verses. Hebrews 12, 11. For at the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. In the long run, it yields the peacefulness of righteousness for those who have been trained by it. Oh, I think I understand. Self-control or discipline helps you build on solid ground. It helps you not take the hammer and then get hurt. You know, the Bible really does give great directions for everyday life. Even for us new construction workers? Yeah, especially for us. You know, that reminds me of a funny joke. <laughs> Time for a joke, Josh. You can tell he's feeling better, that's for sure. You know, Frank, I'm guessing that you'll have a lesson for every situation. I think we should go and sit down and talk about it, but it's just 
Too bad, that's not have a nice, healthy couch to sit on. Good try, Miss Manny, but you know, it's time to get back to work, guys. Yeah, you're right. I see the work is out there getting ready to lay the foundation. Yep. And after that, we give us a lesson on the power tools. Yeah! Oh, wow. I'm really glad you didn't decide to take the, the power drill or the nail gun. <gasps> There's a nail gun? How would you nail gun? Can I look? Yeah. Remember, guys, self control. Self control. <laughs>